Hey everyone, welcome back to Environment Together. Today, we're gonna to be talking about seagrass. Seagrass describes a family of plants that live in the ocean. There are many different types of seagrass, including paddlegrass, eelgrass, and turtlegrass. I'm serious, they're named after their shapes. Well, not turtlegrass, that one's named because turtles like to lounge in it. But why should you care about turtlegrasses and paddlegrasses? Because seagrasses could be key to reversing global warming. Global warming happens because of a whole host of reasons, but one of the simplest is that there's too much carbon dioxide and not enough oxygen in our atmosphere. One of the side effects of this is increasingly acidic oceans. Seagrass helps with this issue by producing oxygen in abundance, decreasing the acidity of its immediate surroundings. Seagrass is called the lungs of the sea. The average tree produces 260 pounds of oxygen per year. A square meter of seagrass produces over double this at 570 pounds of oxygen per year. To put seagrass's effectiveness into perspective, let's think about it this way. All sea plants, including seagrasses, kelp, and plankton, make up 0.05% of the plant biomass on land and produce roughly the same amount of oxygen each year as those land-based plants. Furthermore, unlike kelp that only grows in cooler waters, the different types of seagrass can grow in waters of most temperatures and even waters up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. If you remember from my last video, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Coral reefs live in temperatures of 73 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. So, seagrasses and corals can live together. And as it turns out, this is probably the best thing we can do for our coral reefs. See, coral needs this mineral called aragonite to grow properly. And seagrass creates oxygen, which helps to produce aragonite. So, seagrass massively helps coral to thrive and avoid bleaching. So seagrass produces more oxygen than any terrestrial plant, helps corals to live, and provides a natural habitat for turtles and other animals? You're probably thinking, if this stuff is so great, someone should be planting more of it. And I completely agree. Luckily, a few people are way ahead of us. Back in 2014, that's four years ago, the Virginia Institute of Marine Science seeded 456 acres of Chesapeake Bay and coastal Virginia with 7.65 million eelgrass seeds. By 2015, the eelgrass had grown to cover 6,195 acres. At this point, the bay has been effectively restored and a similar effort has done wonders down in Tampa Bay, Florida. It's important to understand why the eelgrass left Chesapeake Bay to begin with. And no, it didn't just swim away. That was terrible. Seagrass was lost at 1% per year in the 1970s. In the 2000s, 7% of global seagrass was lost each year. Seagrass is one of the world's most endangered ecosystems. Modern pollution and fertilizer, fertilizer, fertilizers have massively hurt seagrass populations by causing algal blooms that eat up their oxygen and block their sunlight. Replanting seagrass in dirty waters would be pointless, so it's important for waters to be clean and clear so that seagrass can be effectively restored. Seagrasses are a truly amazing group of plants. They are something that gives me hope for the environment. They oxygenate waters to decrease acidification and can help corals to be vital. This in turn creates more oxygen and can allow marine communities to grow. I'm optimistic about the future of our planet because of marine plants like seagrasses and kelp, which I'll talk about in my next video. I wanted to make this video primarily to give you guys some hope and show that it's not too late to get involved. You can make a difference. I'm serious. With plants like seagrass and your perseverance, we can save the environment together.